Okay, everybody, welcome back to the Column of Fire. Let's keep getting religious, uh, amongst other things. So, it's Jen's turn, but you know what? I was thinking about it, and I got up and got a drink of water. Uh, I think this uh, prestige I got, I better use it right now. I could save it for later, but I just noticed Jen could you this Jen could pull the exact same trick I just pulled. Because if Jen uses her purple die to recruit Jan over here, um, first of all, Jan, when she recruits him, will become a neutral, and then Jan could use his power. So Jen could score six points as well. I don't like that. I'm going to go on ahead and use this uh, right now to remove this Protestant top from the board so that Jen can't uh, swoop in and get six points. So uh, that was actually a pretty good use of it as a preventative measure to make sure Jen, because even just one Protestant and two neutrals means Protestants would win the religious conflict and Jen, being a Protestant, would score six points. So yeah, that was a good thing to do. And Jen's like, no, because that's exactly what she was going to do. She was going to follow my footsteps and, and catch up in points. Although don't feel too bad for her. You know, all these uh, protection shields she's collecting, like I said, they will protect you from bad events or let you partake in good events. But at the end of the game, if you haven't used them, they're worth a point apiece. Jen might just not use them at all and just uh, cash them in at the end for the final points. Now those will get added. Once somebody hits 50, you tally up stuff like leftover protection you haven't used or uh, trade houses that you've deployed or um, yeah, and each good you haven't sold is worth half a point. That's why you need to get them sold so they're worth you know uh, two points to uh, four points. All right, anyway, so that put the kibosh on Jen's plans. Let's see what the dice have in store for her. All right, so she could still use this purple one to recruit him, but now it's too late. She won't be able to score the six points. So she might as well, <clears throat> since she is, uh, well, she probably should try to push Protestantism elsewhere, which means Francis over here or the wine merchant. I think Jen wants wine. So Jen is going to, all right, and that means she needs her brown, which means this wine merchant is only going to stay with her for two. So she's only going to get two wine out, or three, really. Uh, so anyway, so we'll go on ahead and claim her. And she says, hi, here's some wine. There you go. So now Jen's getting a little bit uh, more well-rounded. And she has opened up. Now, unfortunately, it's only a two. So if Seville flips in her favor, she only scores two points. Oh, with that in mind, maybe it would have been better to go with the four because then she could get the four-point slot in Kingsbridge. Maybe that's wiser. Um, and his power, again, you saw it. It's, it's very, very powerful. Um, yeah, you know what? I take it back. I think... Yeah, <laughs> right. Uh, yeah, Jen really got thrown for a loop there. Instead of using the brown two to recruit that, and she won't get this wine, she will use the white four to recruit Francis here. All right. And so now, right, so Francis himself is a Protestant, and Jen will use Francis's power to put another Protestant out here. So, uh, and Jen will claim the number four. So, uh, now, just one more. It doesn't matter what it is. Jen's clearly going to win the Protestant. Uh, you know, England is going to go Protestant. Jen will score four points when it happens, unless I can come up with a way to stop it. Uh, now, alternatively, hey, my time as a Catholic is almost up. Maybe I want to switch to Protestant and get in over here as well. Who knows? That might be something I do on my turn. But anyway, so Jen recruited him. She used his power. Also, that got her thing. So she is done. And now, of her remaining dice, she can jump to the purple, the next purple, the next brown, or the next blue. All right. So this would let her sell in England. And you know what? Hey, she's in England now. So she could jump up here and sell. Oh, except she doesn't have any wine or any fabric. She doesn't have what she needs, so she's not going to jump up to the purple. She could jump to the blue, which would let her add or remove a uh, Catholic, uh, you know, Catholicism somewhere. Or she could jump up to the brown and just get a point. And remember, she can spend points to skip to jump to the next blue or the next brown or the next purple if she wants. Sometimes you got to spend points to make points. And you know what? I think it's crazy. Jen's going to use her blue, and she's going to jump up here. And she's going to go on ahead and deploy a Catholicism over here, and boom! trigger a religious uh, thing where Catholics clearly lose. Um, and now this is interesting. Catholics lose. If I had a big juicy six point trade house here, because the Catholics are getting run out, I would have lost it. Um, but Jen, Jen's been thinking more about, hey, I just want to grab the four. One, two, three, four. So she ended up in the end uh, pulling off the same kind of trick. Uh, she triggered a religious conflict there. She was the only one in. She benefited because she was Protestant. And that worked out pretty well. So that was the end of the second year. Let's move on to the third year. Okay, so I am now down to zero. It is time. Am I going to switch from Catholicism to Protestants? Hmm, I mean, the board's wide open, isn't it? 
So, if I switch over, I won't get the religious minority bonus, but Jen won't be getting it either, although Jen might switch the other way. I'll go on ahead and stay, and let's say how long I'm going to be. I'm going to be a Catholic for four more years, and I'm in the minority, so I get one point, and now, hey, I get more cloth! i.e. a half a point, and I can add or remove a Protestant or a Catholic anywhere. Let's just go on ahead and start pushing uh, Paris over the top again so I can score another six points. That'd be nice. Although now, Jen can just counteract because I've got Pierre, Jen's got Francis. They're the French and English equivalent of each other. I don't know if that's true in the books or not, but let's see here. So anyway, so I've done that. I've activated... All right. Oh, but I should have done the countdown as well. So I've got four more years with Clothy and four more years with Pierre. All right, so that was it for me. Jen, her time is up as well. She'll stay uh, Protestant, score th uh, for three years, gets one point for the minority. She gets another shield, and she gets to manipulate something again. All right, so another shield. And now here's the deal. She could use it to start building this up, but she would rather just go on ahead and cancel my now because she doesn't want me to get those six points. So every time I add one, she'll just remove one. Hmm, okay. So, that was that. So, we're, we're and now, um, we did the, the holidays. Time is passing. We're going on to the second half. I've got three free dice. Let's see what they got in store for me. Ooh. I, ooh. So, if I, I could uh, get Jan, um, which, would, which would not be bad, because uh, it would give me more control over religion. And since it's a six, I would bump Jen down to a five. So Antwerp is worth more to me than her. That's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Although, then I'd be in danger, because both Jen and I would have a vested interest over here. And um, that could be bad, because then one or the other of us would get kicked out eventually. So I could go with that, or I could recruit White. Oh, by the way, who is the new person in town? Why, it's Elizabeth the first. Two points, but she's Protestant. Where are the good Catholics? Neutral Protestant, neutral Protestant. Ah, so there's no Catholics I can um, join. So I just have to rely on Pierre. Uh, Katerina de Medici, de Medici, two points, or Elizabeth two points. I mean, I wouldn't mind just scoring two points. If I use this four, that's a lot of points I'm building off of Elizabeth. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's go on ahead and get Elizabeth. Oh, I do not like... Oh, but I'm just putting a Protestant in there. But I've got all this cloth, and I want to sell my cloth here, so I'm going to do it anyway. All right. So, she joins me for four years. She will be in my back pocket. She immediately scores me two points in the race to 50. And, unfortunately... Those dang Protestants get uh, get another leg up in Kingsbridge. Uh, and in the meantime, I do put a trade house in four, which means Jen gets bumped down to three. So um, even if the place goes Protestant, I've made Jen earn less points. But hopefully I can switch it to Catholicism somehow. I don't like my chances, though. We'll see what happens. All right, so that's it. And now, of my last two dice that are free, I can either do the brown one or the orange. Let's see, where am I? Brown... Orange would get me one point. Brown would let me sell books. And I do have one book to sell. Uh, let's see. Although, wait. Uh, yeah. And I can sell it. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to go on ahead and I'm going to use Brown to jump forward to the first Brown. And instead of spending points to jump to the second one, this either lets me collect a book or lets me sell one or two books. You know, one in Paris and one in, uh, what is it? Uh, Netherlands. Hmm, let's see here. So I could sell this for a quick four, or I could collect another one, and then when I come around, I can get six. I'm just going to sell it for the four. I'm selling this book and scoring four more points. One, two, three, four. You can see, this is a fast playing game. All right, and that's it for my free dice. I'm done. Now it's Jen's second half of the year. She rolls her free dice. Okay. Oh, by the way, who got revealed? Ooh, we have an event. The Pope excommunicates Elizabeth I. I guess that's why she, she knew it was coming. That's why she joined with me and instructs all English Catholics to disobey the Queen's commands. Each player with a trading house in England must turn one die to the number three and place it on Loch Levin. All righty. Each player with a trading house in England must turn one die. Wait a minute. But I'm, but, but, but I don't have to do that. I'm Catholic. No, it's, it doesn't matter, it says each player. So we're both here. We both have to lose one of our dice. Now me, there's nothing I can do about it. I have to do it. One of my free dice, or no, actually it could be any. So I could pull one off of here. I'm locking it away in lock 11, and I'll have to roll, and that's how long it'll be locked up, or I can give up one of my remaining ones. I have no protection, so I have to do this. Jen, she's got plenty of protection. She'll just spend a protection to not do it. But me, 
Um, right. Okay, so, do I want to... These are all good. And I don't want to give up, Elizabeth. She has two points. Alrighty, I'll give up my... I'll give up my... Um, or brown card. Alright, so, and I go, please be roll. Roll low. It's a six. It's going to be locked up for six years. I've lost that. Oh my gosh, that is, that is bad news. Okay, well, anyway. So that event happened. It's gone. That's why it's good to have protection. And now, Mary Stewart. Finally, a good Catholic shows up. Alrighty, so, maybe I'll worry about her later. But anyway, now it is Jen's turn. This is what she rolled. Who is she going to recruit? Where is she going to build a trade house? Uh, she wouldn't mind getting into Paris. Uh, yeah. I mean, heck, she could take a two-pointer just like I did. Then she'd have a trade house in every city in the world, so she'd be ready to sell no matter what. Yeah, I think she will. Jen's going to go on ahead and play this five. Uh, I got Elizabeth the first. Yeah, we're actually, uh, coincidentally, kind of hitting a lot of the same beats. Uh... Uh, Katarina is neutral, so Paris is, is bending neutral. Jen scores two points immediately for getting her. Jen, and now... All right, oh, and she puts her trade house over there in the number five slot. So Jen, I mean, those trade houses are worth points to her at the end of the game as well. So she's fully deployed. She's happy about that. And now she does either a purple or a brown action. Brown would give her a point. Purple would jump up here and let her uh, sell in uh, Antwerp where she does... Ooh. Now, this is interesting. I, I forgot to mention, I put these here as a two-player game reminder. This is easy to forget. In a two-player game, if a player uses the any of the standard sell a single good in the appropriate city action, they can also deploy a neutral marker in that city if they want. That doesn't happen in higher player count, so it's another way that the board fills up quicker. So, we could jump over here to purple. And, um, and Jen could sell the one book she's got for only two points. That's not that exciting. But she could also put a neutral here, which gets it filled up that much quicker so she can score another six points if she wants to. That was if she jumps to the purple. Or she could lose a point to jump over here and sell in Paris. And that's interesting. If she sells in Paris, yeah, that's what she's going to do. Jen is actually going to lose a point to use the purple, skipping this first purple, and instead going to the second purple, boop, to sell in Paris. You can sell, um, she, if she had a book and a, and a, and a, or she could do both, she only has the book, she's gonna sell it and get four points. One, two, three, four. So basically she just made three points instead of two points. That was an extra point she made, um, and I think that was worth it. And, what the heck, ooh. Oh, uh, this is dangerous. She could, as a bonus, put a neutral here, but then Paris is, uh, as soon as one thing gets done, and Jen knows I get to go next, so I don't think Jen wants to put that neutral there. Even though she could, that means on my turn, I'd use Pierre, turn it Catholic, she would get kicked out. She's not going to do that. She's not going to take advantage of that little bonus. All right, so that was it for her. We're now on to the next year, first half. So I'm still Catholic, and um, I get some more cloth. And we move down to three. Cloth, cloth, cloth. Clothity cloth. Oh, I need to sell some of this cloth. I get to manipulate. So four goes down to three. So I will go on ahead and try to push Parath Catholic because, hey, if it goes my way, Jen gets kicked out. I get six points. So I'll do that. And Elizabeth, she's going to be with me for a while longer. And every year she's given me two points. Nice. I am in the minority, so I get one point. And now it is Jen's turn. She's going to stay Protestant for a bit longer. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. Oh, and I forgot. Lock Levin, my locked up die, slowly works its way to freedom. So, uh, Jen goes down to Protestant. She gets another shield, i.e. another point. And so she can manipulate any religious thing anywhere. She could get rid of... All right, so we both have a vested interest there. Oh, you know what she could do? She could either kick out the Catholic or she could put her on Protestant. And that means at the end of her turn, she would trigger a religious conflict because it's full. And since it's a tie, uh, nothing happens. And that, um, you'll stab you away, stop. Or Jen could just cancel this. She'll just go ahead and cancel what I put in. All right. And then she will also get two points. So that was that. And now we're on to the second half of the year again. I've got to roll my one free die. All my dice are taken up. So, it's a three. I think that means I'll come over here to Antwerp and, um, you know, recruit uh, good old Jan. He's been around forever. And, so that's a three. And I can take a point or I can do a neutral. 
I will just take a point, another point, to use his power, and I put a thing over here in slot number three, and he's a neutral, so Antwerp is starting to go neutral, and that was my turn, and now it is Jen's turn. Oh, oh no, and now for my last action, I used one of my remaining free dice to do a bonus. I have no dice, all my dice are gone, oh no. So that is a real bummer. So you can see why sometimes you might want to say, you know what, just kill one of these dice. Because all my dice are tied up. Now, it's, it's a good thing because, hey, these are all big, powerful actions that I'm just doing for free. But since I have no dice of my own, I'm not going to be able to recruit anybody. So that's kind of scary. That's really going to slow me down. All right. So anyway, at the end of my turn, I have no free dice. Therefore, I cannot do a bonus action. Ouch. Ouch, Elliot. Okay. So it is Jen's turn. She's got two free dice. Um, right. And, you know, it's just seeing just how painful it was. Now, um, to, to see me locked up, if Jen uses this brown six, this brown six is going to be tied up for a while. I think she'll use this purple three, which means she can recruit, since it's a wild, from any place. And, we're, and, and that means she's leaving the brown, which means she will get to do the brown action of grabbing a favor. That's pretty cool. She's happy with that. So anyway, where does she want to go, since she could go any place? She's already... Uh, let's see. No, uh, it would. It, well, it if she goes to Seville, it would mean an upgrade in her trading house from a two to a three, and Seville would be getting her wine. Allison McKay um, is nice, just letting you move forward and do actions. So that, oh, but it's Catholic. Jen doesn't want Catholics in Paris. An ore trader who is Catholic, or Mary Stewart. Suddenly, all the Catholics are out. Okay, Jen's going to go on ahead over here to the wine merchant. And uh, get some wine immediately, and that wine merchant's going to be with her for a while. And so, uh, she's got a brown. That's her only free die. She will move forward to the brown, and she will get not a one-pointer, not a one-pointer, a two-pointer. She's okay with that. That's two more points for her at the end of the game. That was it. No religious conflicts are going to be played out at the end of the turn. And so, we are done. Moving on to the next year, as my count right. So... I'm going to be Catholic for a while. I get some cloth. I got all the cloth in the world, but no place to sell. And, um, right, so what do I want to manipulate? I can't put anything over the top. And it's interesting, because Jen's got that one, she's just going to cancel anything I do. I'll just go on ahead and try and push Paris again. I will get two more points. And I will get a point or a neutral. Let's do that. Yeah, let's do a neutral from good old Jan. Boom! Religious conflict, everybody. Paris looks like uh, trouble for Jen. Oh, and Loch Lomond is slowly, slowly counting down. Okay, so, hey, at the end of my turn, either in the first half... Oh, I get one point for being in a minority, uh, which is just weird in a two-player game. But anyway, so, we're going to clear this out. Catholics won. Jen gets booted, and I get six more points. One, two, three, four, five, six. So don't feel too bad for me. Even though I've got no dice, I've got two people who can manipulate the religious that I can do back-to-back. -back. So, obviously, that's put me in good stead. But hey, Jen's been collecting um, points in the form of other stuff throughout the game. So, anyway, so that was it. Jen's turn. She will count down, and she will get yet another point of protection. And, uh, let's see, so that's two. One, she, and that's interesting. She's going to lose her manipulator before I lose mine. So, all right, so uh, Jen will try to return the favor and start pushing uh, Protestantism over here to kick me out and get six points for her. So that's that. She gets two points, and she gets some wine. All right, so I forgot to do the countdown. There's a five and a four, and a three to a two. Okay, so... That was it. Oh, and then Jen also gets a point from Minority. And let's see here. So now we roll our free dice. I have no free dice. Therefore, I can't uh, recruit anybody. I just have to pass on this second half of the year. That's painful. Jen Dill does have one. And she rolls a two. So she could recruit a brown two. Oh, which, by the way, let's reveal what that is. Uh, which I think she will. She will get... Uh, uh, Jeremina, Jeronima Ruiz. All right. So there is Jen's next one. And let's see. So that is, she likes that. And uh, she'll put a neutral over here to try to get it to score. And let's see. And what was she using? She was using a two. She already has a two. So that's it. So Jen is now got even more stuff going on. Although having recruited that now, Jen doesn't get to do a bonus action of her own. But she'll get some dice back pretty soon now. So that was the end for that year. We're moving on again.
I'm going to do a countdown, uh, but I'm still not going to get a die this round. Then Jen, she is going to get her white die back, and she's got some other ones that are coming pretty quickly as well. Uh, so she'll probably be, although flipping this is only going to score her two points. She really wants to flip over here. Oh, hey, you want to know? She didn't flip over there. She flipped over here because I totally forgot about that, thereby kicking me out and scoring her six. One, two, three, four, five, six. That was the better way to go to trigger that in Antwerp rather than to build up for one over there because I just totally forgot about that. So that was it. We're on to the next year. And you know what, folks? I think I'm going to stop right there because that should give you a pretty good idea of the ebb and flow of Column of Fire. And now, if you want to hear some final thoughts, you can hit that eye in the top right corner of the screen or follow the show notes in five, four, three, two, one.